Hello everybody, in this video we're going to be going through a few uh, right triangle trig examples in which we involve what we refer to as angles of elevation and angles of depression. Okay, so let's go ahead and start by defining that. If you take a look up here on the top left, uh, we say an angle measured from the horizontal up is referred to as an angle of elevation. Of course, you think elevate is the base word there, and depress, you know, to be lower. Angle of depression would be down from the horizontal, but the key word here is the horizontal. So you notice this picture, this diagram here, the horizontal is of course you can think of it as kind of like the x-axis or maybe not just the horizon but you'll notice that angle of elevation goes up from the horizontal angle of depression goes down it's very important because when you are describing <coughs> excuse me a situation or say a word problem if you're a math student you'll hear these terms and you'll need to be able to sketch out or at least conceive of the situation and one note I want to make on this is the note that I make here in italics but no matter which way <clears throat> you notice I refer to the horizontal as kind of like the x-axis <coughs> excuse me we say the angle of elevation would be up and you'll notice it looks like a counterclockwise rotation which we often consider positive angles counterclockwise but even if it is an angle of depression we still refer to this as a positive angle so when we discuss angles of elevation and depression they are always positive no matter which way we kind of think of it as rotating and last but not least I write here I say all right uh, if an observer is positioned at the vertex of the angle, so that would be the corner, of course, of these two angles, kind of in line with the horizontal, okay, then we would say that uh, the, the angle of depression or the angle of elevation up or down, down from the horizontal, excuse me, is referred to as the line of sight. So a few, uh, <clears throat> a few understandings, you know, always positive, and a few vocabulary uh, phrases here. We say elevation's up, depression's down, line of sight is along you know, from the horizontal down or up from the horizontal. So I'm going to do a couple of examples really quickly here. The first one, I have not provided us with a diagram, but that's okay. We say, okay, a 75-foot flagpole casts a shadow 43 feet long. To the nearest 10 minutes, what is the angle of elevation of the sun uh, of the sun from the tip of the shadow? Maybe we won't go to the nearest 10 minutes. We won't go minutes. How about we go nearest degree or uh, but the fact of the matter here is this, we need to conceive of this situation. So let's go ahead and start with this. We say our horizontal. This would be our, our horizontal right here. We say we have some flagpole. So I'm going to draw on this flagpole, and we will understand that the flagpole uh, meets with the ground in a right angle, okay? But what we're seeking to find is the angle of elevation uh, of the sun from the tip of the shadow. So if this is casting a shadow, let's go ahead and draw on our sun over here. And just to be, be very uh, stereotypical about it, we say here's our nice warm sun in the sky. Here's our sun. Do, 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 do. And it is casting a shadow over the top. I think the number one mistake people make on this is when they when they uh, conceive of the tip of the shadow, okay, we say, well, where would the tip of the shadow be? Actually, the tip of the shadow would be right here. This is the tip of the shadow. And we know the length <clears throat> of a few things here. We say it's a 75-foot flagpole, so this would be 75.0 feet. 75.0 feet, and we say that it casts a shadow 43 feet long. The number one mistake I find that students make on this is they put 43 feet right here. And this is not the shadow. Of course, this is the uh, the ray of the sun casting over the top of the pole, but that's not actually the shadow. We need to put the 43 feet on the base, the base of our rectangle, or our triangle here. Okay, so we say 43 feet. And of course, you might be able to say now, hey, this is not, this is not drawn to scale, and it's not. So we have our right triangle. We want to find the angle of elevation of the sun, and recall that angle of elevation is an angle up from the horizontal. So we want to find this angle here, and we'll just label it theta. But we'll just use our right triangle trig definitions to come up with an equation to work backwards to find theta. And in this instance, it seems to work best if we use tangent, because we could say the tangent of this angle uh, is the opposite over the adjacent sides, which we know. So Let's start by writing our equation here. We say tangent of this angle theta has to be the same thing as opposite, so 75.0 feet in length, over adjacent, 43.0 feet in length. And so if we want to solve this, first things first, let's go ahead and get a decimal for this, a decimal approximation. So we say tangent, tangent of our angle that we're considering here is approximately equal to, now I have a calculator, go ahead and pull it open, we'll pull it up here so we can see a little bit easier, but we say 75 divided by 43. We get this number here. Uh, we're going to go out four places. So we say 1.7442-ish. 1.7442-ish. 
And so to undo tangent, of course, we have to do tangent inverse of both sides of this equation. So we say tangent inverse of everything on the left. That's that tangent with the negative one. Tangent inverse of everything on the right. So these tangents on the left cancel out, and we're left with just theta. So theta is the tangent inverse of this value, 1.7442. And so we'll just go ahead and put this in our calculator. I believe I have an arc tangent button here. So we say tangent h, okay? So we can use this here. We say uh, tangent h, uh, I believe we type that in first, clear. I've not used this calculator before. So let's go ahead and try this, 1.7442 tangent inverse, wait, there it is, okay, okay, I was like the hyperbolic tangent, we don't want that. I have my second key here, so we'll, we'll try this again, clear, we say tangent inverse, 1.7442 tangent inverse of this, about 60.2-ish degrees if we go to the nearest tenth of a degree. So this is approximately 60.2-ish degrees. We just want to go ahead and fill this in on our triangle here, just make sure this is reasonable. So if I said this was a 60.2 degree-ish angle, would this be reasonable? And I say, yeah, because that's a, you know, it's bigger than the other acute angle, and it's opposite the, the intermediate side here. So yes, this is a good example of angle of elevation. Let's go ahead and take a look down here in the bottom right. We'll be done. But uh, angle of depression. How would you work a problem with an angle of depression? So we say, consider this. A man would climb 213 meters up the side of a pyramid and finds that the angle of depression to his starting point is 52.6 degrees. So we want to know how high up the ground is he. So let's consider this situation. We have our guy. He'd be standing up here at the top of the pyramid right here. But recall that we say angle of de depression would be down from the horizontal. And so the horizontal, yes, it could be considered to be the ground, the ground here. But we could also look at it this way, anything parallel to the ground. So this dotted line that I've given us here would also be considered a horizontal. And so his line of sight back down to his starting point, which is down here where he started, uh, is 52.6 degrees. You notice it is a positive 52.6 degrees. Okay. We also know that when he climbed up the pyramid, we have the side of a pyramid being 213 meters. So using this diagram, what we see here is we have this triangle. It is often good to kind of draw it off to the side so we can see it a little bit better. But we say here's our right angle. We know that this is a 52.6 degree angle. We know this side is x, and we say 213 meters, of course. Uh, if we were to flip this the other way around now, kind of invert it. So I mean like kind of spin it this way. And then if we had like an axis running through it, we would rotate it this way. We could say our triangle could be conceived of as being this one right here, or, or on the, the pyramid here. These, these two are the same triangle, so we say, Maybe a little bit easier to look at it this way, but we say x is the height of the triangle. Okay, we said this this here was our 52.6 degree angle, 52.6 degrees. And we also know that this is 213 meters. So let's go ahead and set up a trig equation to relate our two things we know to the one thing we don't know. I'm going to kind of drag it out over here. But we could say, okay, so which trig function could we use to relate our angle that we know to the side opposite the hypotenuse here? And if you're comparing it to the hypotenuse, you're dealing with either sine or cosine. But in this instance, it is sine. So we say the sine of 52.6 degrees, 52.6 degrees, would be equal to x over 213 meters. So now if we were to go ahead and just do the algebra here, we say take both sides times 213m, 213m times this. Uh, these 213s would cancel out on the right, and we get this. x is 213 of these sine 52.6 degree angle things. Okay, and this is all in meters. Meters. All right, so let's go ahead and pull out our calculator. So we have 52.6, 52.6. Oops, let me clear this, go back here. We say 52.6 with the sine of this. We take that times 213. We get 169 now. Uh, notice that our original measurement, 213 meters, went out to the nearest whole number. Let's go one extra place value. We'll go out one more. So we say 169.2-ish. So we say x. x is approximately 169.2 meters. An entirely reasonable answer. So a couple of examples with angles of elevation and depression.